and me Baby, can't you see We can win the day Jared, tell me about the place. When someone asks you, what is whiskey, what do you tell them? Um, whiskey is Oklahoma City's premier whiskey club. We've got over 200 bottles of whiskey, 400 total spirits, uh, a great selection of classic cocktails, beer, wine, small plate food menu, and a, a great selection of cigars in a walk-in humidor. Well, let me ask you that. Why the decision to go into the whiskey business? Uh, I'm a huge fan of whiskey. Uh, my partner Dwayne and I are both advocates for the whiskey movement in Oklahoma. We've pushed not only the, the distributors and, and some of the liquor stores to bring it in, but we've also traveled worldwide um, to whiskey tastings, you know, from New York to Vegas, all the way over to Scotland for a trip last month. I'm um, just trying to bring whiskey back to Oklahoma, back to the, the roots of, of what we did here and, and what people used to drink. What's been the response so far? It's been great. Uh, we've sold more whiskey than we could have ever imagined. Uh, between that and the classic cocktails here, we're, we're thriving, and it's great to see the community really taking us in. Well, you know, Jared, it sounds like a fun thing, go to Europe and, you know, taste some whiskey. Has it been fun? It has. It's been a blast. Uh, the things you learn, the people you meet, just the overall experience is just it's changing, changing the way I, I think about spirits. Um, you know, growing up in Oklahoma, vodka, beer, sure. even a little bit of wine was kind of what everybody drank. Uh, and now you're starting to see the movements of, of classic cocktail bars, um, whiskey, the higher end spirits that weren't here 5, 10, 15 years ago. What's behind the name? It's not just whiskey, it's WSKY. Sounds like a radio station. It is after a radio station. Um, when we were looking for locations, we wanted to be outside of Bricktown, but somewhere in the downtown area to bring back that club feel of Oklahoma City. Um, we found this building about a year ago, and I started researching and, and find, found out that the building was actually the M&M Hotel back in the early 1920s, which was the first ever African-American hotel in Oklahoma City that also housed a, a jazz lounge. That jazz lounge was home to Charlie Christian, the Blue Devil, some of the great jazz musicians who started in Oklahoma City and eventually moved on to New Orleans and across the world. Um, so working with Robot House Creative on doing our branding and our, our logos, um, we decided on WSKY simply because it, it was whiskey for Whiskey Lounge, but it also signified that old radio station feel. Uh, WSKY is the same as doing a uh, radio call sign. Um, we worked with a design group out of Edmond called A-Line Design, and Paige and her crew were incredible. Um, they did every single detail from whiskey on tap, which we have over here, to the rolling library ladder, uh, to LEDs throughout the entire bar, hidden TVs behind picture frames, uh, state-of-the-art purification systems. They caught every detail in here and brought it together to make the, the, new, you know, the new school, old school cool, uh, bringing in an old school lounge with all the new amenities. Tell me about the background of bringing whiskey to life. Uh, I, I noticed over the summer there were a lot of late nights going on over here. There were. Um, we had a lot of hurdles coming into this project. One being is to be a true bar with smoking. We had to rezone. Um, to do that, we had to actually file for variances through the Oklahoma City, uh, whether it be the, the zoning department, the planning commission, the city council. We had to go through all the, all the proper steps in order to, to be able to do this. Uh, and then, of course, once we came in the building, to be able to keep up our word on being you know, state of the art with the ventilation, with, with things like that. We had to rewire the building, put a, put a ventilation system in, all new HVAC. Um, we essentially gutted the building top to bottom and, and rebuilt. How long of a process has this been? Uh, it's been almost a year. About a year. Now it sounds like you probably need some backers. Tell me about your partners and who all is involved here. Yeah, there's three of us involved in this project. Uh, myself, John Ferrer, and Dwayne Poor. Um, John and I have been friends for quite a while. Met him, of course, through the cigar business. Um, John is an investment banker. Um, Dwayne is a, uh, in the medical field, uh, and Dwayne's a huge advocate of whiskey and a lover of whiskey. Um, he's kind of taught me everything I've known. Dwayne's one of the largest collectors in the world, um, has a portfolio that's incredible. Um, so the three of us, between the whiskey and cigars and the, and the business knowledge, have really built something that we feel the city needed. Uh, you mentioned location. You're specifically looking for something a little bit outside of Bricktown. Uh, why is that? Why was location important? And were you actually looking at this location to begin with? This location wasn't our first pick. We looked around, um, our real estate agents did a great job. We looked in Midtown, Uptown, Downtown. Um, but this area fit simply because we wanted to do a 30-style pre-prohibition bar. And when you look at Deep Deuce and what Deep Deuce was in the history, um, it just brings you back to this area. Uh, once this building came available, we knew that this was the spot that, that we wanted. Um, and just to stay outside of Bricktown, the reason behind that was simply, you know, we didn't want the hustle bustle. We wanted people to be able to park on the street or park in our parking lot across the street, walk in, not have to worry about paying for parking, walking through all the crowds. We wanted it to be a laid back neighborhood bar. What advice would you give? Let's say I want to open up a small business. What advice would you throw my way? 
don't be afraid to work. Yep. Uh, there were plenty of, plenty of weeks that I have a full-time job as well that I would put in 100, 120, 140 hours a week. Um, being here with contractors, designers, architects, you name it. Staying just on top staying of on top things. Of things. Um, especially in a building like this, you've got to watch budgets, you've got to watch construction. Um, and then, you know, be careful who you pick to work for you. Yep. Um, we picked a world-class staff. All these guys have been in the business a long time. But we handpicked them, we worked with them, we sent them on trips to, to learn more about the cocktail side of things, more about the you know, cigar side of things, and just, just taking care and, and pride in your work uh, in order to create something like this. Well, I gotta ask you, Jared, we're here at a whiskey bar. You are an expert in whiskey. What's your favorite whiskey? What would you recommend for someone off the street who doesn't have that refined palate? What would you recommend? I would recommend a Highland whiskey. Um, I would do something like a Macallan or a Glimmerangi, something that's gonna be light, fruity, a little bit floral for them to start on. Um, one thing that I, I try to explain to people here is, you know, people always say, well, Scotch whiskey should be drank neat. It should be drank straight up. Um, I don't agree with that. I think you should drink whiskey how you want to drink whiskey, whether you want ice in it, Coke in it. We're not going to judge you here. Um, we just want people to enjoy the experience and enjoy the spirits that we do have behind the bar. And people are free to smoke cigars here as well, right? Absolutely. We put a state-of-the-art ventilation system in that turns the air every two minutes. Um, we do have a walk-in humidor as well that has uh, over 50 selections of cigars. So we pride ourselves on allowing a place for non-smokers to come and not feel like they're getting smoked out. Well, Jared, congratulations and best of luck to you and your crew here. Thanks so much.